An iron lung respirator prototype, the goal to build using globally available components and hand tools with basic fabrication skills. A uh, roadmap for the design of an iron lung respirator. Uh, I did historical research for the pandemic ventilator design team on iron lungs, uh, specifically developed in the 1930s and 50s. It was to see how they were uh, built in the old days. I realized that it would be possible to build one with today's resources using readily, be, readily available components. Uh, the roadmap was documented on YouTube. Uh, so if you look up roadmap for the design of an iron lung respirator, uh, you will see the information there. I highly recommend that you view that video before you go any further. Warning, respirators are not toys and can severely damage a patient's lungs or kill the patient if not used properly. Only qualified medical personnel should be operating respirators or those under the direction of a qualified medical person. The prototype case. Note, it is not pretty and is validating the concept. So the purpose of this uh, presentation is that it's validating the concept of if we can build a iron lug um, with readily available components and basic skills. Uh, so selecting the outer case criteria, it must be readily available throughout the world. It must be able to withstand four times the operating vacuum, the maximum operating vacuum. Uh, maximum normal vacuum is 35 centimeters of water. That's the uh, units of vacuum that we use in uh, respirators. Four times 35 centimeters is 140 centimeters of H2O. So that's what we want to do is verify that um, whatever we use for a structure, it can handle that much vacuum. Suitable material is concrete form tubes. They're made out of, con uh, out of cardboard. They're used in uh, the construction industry for setting pillars down and uh, pylons. Uh, 55 gallon steel drums, uh, new or refurbished, uh, will work also. Uh, all of these are readily available. Concrete form tubes. Uh, several manufacturers make concrete form tubes. Sunoco, Ecoform, Sacrete, Quickrete, etc. Uh, they look like this. They're basically very thick cardboard, come in different diameters and different lengths. Uh, 30 inches, 24 inches, 36 inches, typically 12 foot long. Uh, we have a, it's documented on YouTube, uh, vacuum testing a concrete form tube. Uh, so if you basically look up that title, uh, you will see it. Uh, we had successful testing. Sunoco successfully tested a 30 inch diameter by six foot sono tube to 183 centimeters of H2O. So basically what they did is they took it up to limits to see how it would go. It went way past our four times and they went up to 183 and then it did collapse. Uh, and this was a single tube. I highly recommend that you watch the previous video to see the uh, results. A disclaimer, these tests were conducted by Sunoco in response to my request received on March 31st, 2020. The test results are for informational purposes only. Sonotube forming tubes are not designed for medical uses and Sunoco specifically disclaims any warranties that they are fit for any medical purpose. Uh, I was able to get my hands on a couple 55 gallon steel drums. I had bought two refurbished uh, drums that were acquired. They were very clean inside. That was one of the questions I had. And uh, here's an image, very clean. Uh, we have the option of painting the inside if needed. I chose imperfect ones with minor dents were selected specifically uh, um, just to see what would happen. Uh, 55 gallon drum lid. They had the removable lid which would be used for the head end. So what we'll do is we'll use this one for the head end because it's removable. It has a seal that goes with it. Um, and that's one of the areas that we would discuss at the end of this uh, video. First thing I did is I stacked the drums to check the roundness. Uh, it ends up that the bottom of the drums, it gets banged up. They're moved around. So what you'll find is that uh, sometimes uh, example on here, I don't know if you can see it right here, right here there's a flat edge so this one would not work on top. It ended up that when I switched it around we had a reasonable um, mating of the two drums. I cut the bottom off the top drum because we want to make one enclosure. And I cut as close as possible to the end here um, and then what I did is I hammered and dollied it flat. I uh, welded, uh, spot welded in four places uh, on four, uh, you know, north, south, east, west on this. 
about a one inch weld. I found it very difficult to weld. Uh, so what I did is I switched to a torch and flux and one eighth inch plumbing solder to finish and it actually worked very well. The, uh, if there's any gaps, I was able to bridge the gaps. Uh, I vacuum tested it and found there was a minor leak, right? So uh, in order to fix the minor leak, what I did is I seam sealed it with asphalt sealant. Uh, the ones I used was for under, used for undercoating of uh, cars to stop rust. So vacuum pump sources. I have a small vacuum punch pump which I used. Uh, you can also use a vehicle's gasoline engine as a vacuum pump if it has power brakes. So any gas uh, vehicle with power brakes, uh, it will have a vacuum line that goes to your power brake cylinder. I've got it documented on YouTube. At uh, There's two parts. Part two of two uh, actually is a better video to look at. It says use a vehicle's intake manifold as a vacuum source. Another option is use a shop vac. A shop vac may be used also as a vacuum pump. Um, you'd have to have the appropriate fittings used. Uh, you modify and connect to the lid. Uh, we Put any holes in the middle of the lid because that's going to be cut out later for the head end. I welded a bung in the middle of the lid center and that's what I used for uh, um, the uh, my vacuum pump. Um, one of the things when I was checking, I um, I wanted to be able to precisely locate any vacuum leaks so I built uh, my own stethoscope and it was just made with a funnel and a hose and that actually worked quite well so I had a little funnel stuck it up to my ear and used the bottom end of the hose to find out where the leaks were. Um, one of the things you want to do is measure vacuum and, and the instrument to use measure air pressure and vacuum is called a manometer and they're very easy to build and basically you have some hose and some colored water. Uh, it's necessary for testing and measuring the correct operation of the iron lung respirator. Uh, we only need to measure up to 40 centimeters of water. Uh, so the units are centimeters. So on this here, what we'll see is that each one of these um, little lines I've drawn is roughly one centimeter. And uh, it's all documented on YouTube is a DIY, which is do-it-yourself, how to build a manometer. Uh, the one I have an example there is 80 centimeters. Uh, all you need is one that would measure 40 centimeters. Uh, structural testing of 255 gallon drums. Uh, you do not have to test as the following video has verified that dr the drums can withstand 150 centimeters of water without collapsing. Uh, so I documented on YouTube uh, part two of two vacuum test 255 gallon drums as an iron lung. I recommend you read that. Um, one of the things that happens is when you're testing it, um, what happens is the end pieces will suck in, make a loud noise. When I first heard that, I thought it wasn't um, possible to use 55 gallon drums and realized it was. Uh, it ends up the end pieces, the ones that are making all the noise, these are the ones that we are going to be removing for the bellows at one end and the head piece at the other end, so it's not important. Quality testing, the drums that are joined together must be tested to ensure that they do indeed hold vacuum up to 40 centimeters of water. Uh, as the iron lung is built, each stage must be tested. So you, you build, you do a portion test it, do a portion test. That way you can find out uh, and that. I soldered a bung in the middle of the drum to connect the uh, manometer hose. So here's a little bung and then I put a little fitting on it that would mate with the hose that I had. I used a half inch hose. and. Uh, uh, hose clamp and uh, it worked. Actually the drums are very easy to solder, uh, pipe solder with a, uh, a propane torch or I used a, uh, what's the other type called? Uh, I forget. It has a little bit higher temperature and it worked perfectly well. It was easy to solder. Use the flux and away you go. Making the bellows, the bottom was cut out of the uh, bottom drum and basically I left a two inch lip here and I made a wooden bellows back plate. Um, I marked it off into four places so I would have four, eight, eight mounting screws. I marked the very top and the drum uh, so that way I'd always have the same orientation, uh, very important. And that, that way you don't need to have super accurate holes as long as you drill the holes through the wood and at the same time through the lip. And then you just mark and say, this is my uh, reference point and then everything else will be the same when you go in. A bellow details on the mounting lip. I use nut certs on the lip to, to bolt the wooden back plate to. So these are basically, they're kind of like, sometimes they're called nut rivets, uh, threaded inserts and blind inserts. So it lets you uh, uh, sort of rivet in, if you want to call it a nut 
on here so that way you can screw things through the wood. Um, they install like a rivet. Here's the tool, but you don't, on a rivet, you break the nail. This one you don't, you just squeeze it tight. Uh, they come in several sizes. I used the biggest ones that I had, which were one quarter inch dash 20 screws. Uh, one thing I found out is the nut certs don't sit flush. They don't sit flush here, so uh, it makes sealing difficult. Um, it's got like a sixteenth of an inch or so um, seal on, or, or head on it. A uh, solution is to countersink, countersink the wooden back plate that sits on it. That would work fine too. Uh, you can bolt it up, bolt it up tight, then you get an image of how big the hole is and they just put a little countersink on it so it sits up flush. Uh, you have to make sure that the edge is not rough. I had a rough edge so I had to take my grinder and grind it down, make sure everything is flat as possible. Sealing the bellows, wooden back plate, I found that a 20 inch bicycle inner tube fits nicely so what I did is I took a bicycle inner tube and then I just used some scissors and cut all the way around on the inside of it and then it would stretch it over top. On the uh, ceiling side I, I left uh, most of the um, rubber on here so that way it would seal up against the two inch lip. Uh, this was a 20 inch bicycle tube. Uh, my wooden piece here is, should be about 22 inches. Uh, the size of a 55 gallon drum is 22 and a half so this gives about half inch enough play that we can move it around and make. I also sh chamfered the edge. This is the edge that would made up with the uh, drum. There might be a little a rounded edge on it so this way I won't have a problem with that. Weather stripping, what I found is that um, I, I used some weather stripping. This is the stuff that's used for sealing doors and windows. Uh, this one was 3 8 inch thick. I could probably get away with a quarter inch and that um, this sealed quite well. It was self-adhesive so I just sealed it all the way around the lip, the drum lip, and that uh, helped. Uh, vacuum tested again. So basically we have our, our, our basically drum plate put in. We got a seal on it. So basically I used the manometer and my vacuum pump to uh, get at least 40 centimeters of uh, water vacuum. Now it's time for the bellows design. Earlier I had built a bellows from a wheelbarrow inner tube. So this is an inner tube from a wheelbarrow. Uh, what I did is I, I cut the inside and then when it folded out I had one continuous loop of rubber and uh, I've got it documented on how to do that. It's called How to Make a Bellows Air Pump Do, do uh, Yourself DIY on YouTube. Um, I suggest that what you do is you take a look at that and see how that works. So I modified the back plate for the bellows. I cut a big hole in the bellows, right? Um, not a really big hole. It was just a, to, to mate with uh, the small bellows I, I made. I wanted to validate that a bellows would actually uh, uh, work in that. And then I cut a matching hole on the intake side of the bellows. Normally there was a little reed valve here. I cut that out and just made a, a nice matching hole. Screwed them together, put some gasket material in between so it wouldn't leak. I mounted the bellows on the back plate. So here's the bellows. It's got a uh, hose clamp, right? So it's got a pair of hose clamps here. And I clamped it on. On this side I had my exhaust reed valve that I would push on. So when I push on that, it lets it, it lets air out. It's only got a one inch uh, size opening on this so it, it wouldn't let air out as fast. It should have a bigger opening. And then when you pull on it, it causes a vacuum that reed valve closes. Uh, again, uh, it's a good time to review the bellows design on, on the YouTube video that I mentioned earlier. I tested the bellow. Uh, there was a minor air leak right about here and it limited the vacuum to uh, 24 centimeters of water and it would st start leaking there. Uh, I, I never fixed it. I just said, okay, I'm going to go ahead. And what I did is I started pulling, pushing and pulling this in and out. I found that the farther, the most vacuum is when I pulled hard on, away from the drum. So when I pulled this direction, I got the most vacuum and I could get up to 22 centimeters of water just with this little tiny thing here. Uh, next step, uh, if someone wants to continue this, is to make a bigger bellows. So I used a um, the bellows depended on the tire inner tube that was used. I used a wheelbarrow inner tire, inner tube. It was only a 13 inch wheel. Um, so if you used a trailer, a small, small yard tractor inner tube, um, you know, 20 inch uh, wheel or, or yard tractors go by the outside diameter of the wheel. They call them 20 inches and 
trailers and cars go by the rim size which is 14 inch so you can get a bigger inner tube and then you can uh, uh, make a, a bigger be bellows and that would allow you to reach 40 centimeters of water uh, what you'd have to build as the head end so you'd have to have a platform um, that would slide out it would slide inside the uh, um, the 55 gallon drums then you'd also have uh, wheels on here so that way the person could lie there slide out and you'd have to do that uh, you'd have to seal the, the head end so you'd have to have some sort of uh, seal here uh, with modern materials and then you'd have to wrap it around the, the patient's neck um, use velcro or something so you have a nice airtight seal on here and that and it have to be large enough that the person could get their head through um, something interesting is that uh, I've read that laying face down as opposed to laying on the back aids in breathing so uh, um, I believe that this could be used with the iron lung. Uh, there's an article on C CNN, it's called Why Positioning COVID-19 Patients on Their Stomachs Can Save Lives, and they have some pictures here. So this might be uh, advantageous to uh, doing this with an iron lung. Uh, sealing the front lip, what I found is that if you get a 24 inch bicycle tube, bicycle tubes, 24 inch means it's the outside diameter, the inside is, is roughly uh, about 20, to, or I think it's about a 20 inch so if you if you snip with scissors all the way around the inside this could be a seal that you could put on the end of the drum and that uh, you can use bicycles seat quick releases can be used as clamps to apply pressure to the aid and ceilings these are readily available from any bicycle so shop I think I got 10 like this for uh, $12 or $15 off Amazon uh, part two uh, of this video will show the prototype in action and validating the design. So